Inside the Barriers, brought to you by Bet Deluxe, serious betting for serious punters. We're inside the barriers. Good day. Welcome. It's Derby Day, one of the great days of racing in Australia, and it's going to be a beauty on a rain affected track. Talking of beauties, Miles Fitz is here. How are you, mate? Hello, BM. Yeah, Derby Day. It's always an interesting one. It's a staying test for the three year olds. So you always try and find the horse you think will run 2,500 metres, and we've got actually probably a star, should we say, star studded Derby this good year. Good field. Good field. Yeah, really good yeah. field. So. Um, interesting to see a lot of these ones at the top end too either have a Kiwi link or a Kiwi bred. So uh, they do a great job of breeding the stayers over there in New Zealand. Now the other thing is that the Dan Murphy $500 didn't go off last week with Animo beating you know, I'm Thunderstruck. I can't believe that. Anyway, it's gone to $1,000. $1,000 from Dan Murphy if you can give us one, two, three in the derby. Yeah, how good's the punter's pick, BM? And all we want from you is to submit your punter's pick because all we have to do is pick the first three in order. And, well, we'll start with the derby. Do you want me to kick it away? Yes, mate. Sharp, uh, and, sharp and smart. What do you think? I'm going to go with Mr Maestro on top, the four, to beat Sharp and Smart and then Berkeley Square or Barkley Square, as we're saying, uh, to run in third. So they're my three for the punter's pick. And I'll explain why in a minute. What have you got? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going with uh, Sharp and Smart. Uh, I respect Rogerson. I respect the way that this horse has come through the, uh, the races in Sydney. He's handled the heavy tracks up there. He seems to be the right horse for the right time. He's by Redmond. Uh, he'll run all day, this horse. He's got the best jockey in Australia aboard. I think he's the one. Uh, Barclay Square, going great guns. The wind was good in the Vars, backing up on the seven days from the valley. And... Mr Maestro, he's done everything right. The gate just worries me because they start just by the tower and if you're not in, going around the first turn, you're in a bit of trouble. I'm expecting a little bit of speed uh, in yeah. this derby. And uh, look, for me, probably the gate wasn't as great a concern with Mr Maestro. I thought he was superb um, in the Norman Robinson. I just he was wide he was, most of the way. Yeah, I thought he was just uh, really tough, really strong. It's how I want to see a horse run over the 2,000 metres. Uh, in second of it, sharp and smart. Done absolutely nothing wrong uh, up there in Sydney. And, and uh, Tim Rogerson got this horse absolutely flying. Uh, Barclay Square, if you asked me a little while ago, I probably would have said, oh, look, yeah, I, I've, I've got it on top. But now I'm just a slight query as to whether or not it's going to be that genuine 2,500 metre horse like I think Mr Maestro and Sharp and Smart are. But yeah, it, it, it's a genuine star-studded field, shall we say, for the three-year-old Colts. But Maestro for me, Sharp and Smart, and then Barclay Square. And, and look, I, I'm hoping Barclay Square can get the first group one there uh, for the O'Sullivans, but, uh, but Mr Maestro ruled all the Kiwis ruling at the top of the market. Is there a Johnny Get Angry hidden away there somewhere? I don't think there's a Johnny... <laughs> if, look, if there was one absolute and complete yeah. nutter roughy that was going to be there, I know it's not super rough, but I love the win of Grand Piero Geelong Cup Day uh, of Craig Williams. It was a long way back in the ruck. The horse had no right to, to win from where it was from. Um, look, in the Grand Syndicate's colours, Mark Zara aboard, Gate 15, Jason Warren trained at $34. That's my genuine rough hope for the Derby. OK, your numbers, of course. Uh, my numbers are 4, 1 and 2 for the Derby. Yeah, we're up near the top. 1, 2, 4 for the punters pick, 1, 2, 4 for me. Now, what about the Coolmore? This is a beauty, the Group 1. Yeah, it certainly is. And look, like the Coolmore's got absolutely, uh, well, it's just got stallions written all over it. We're seeing uh, Best of Bordeaux, Jack and O. Um, Natuno was a horse I had a lot of time for. Economics, even Great Barrier Reef, Cool and Gatter, the winner of the Moya. Um, we're seeing line up in the Coolmore, but it's all about the big boy for Godolphin for me. In secret for James Cummings yeah. and James McDonald. Uh, the team's flying. It's probably the best I've seen. Um, a stable go yep. in spring consistently uh, for many years, the Godolphin team. Uh, this horse has been absolutely superb. Look, he gets in, um, the weight's right, the draw's right in nine, the pilot's right, the record's right. He's three from five. I mean, he went under at Rose Hill going back on the 24th. He only went under to Jack and O. Uh, I, I don't think you need to worry about that. I think the tables will get turned over. In secret, to win, uh, Jackano's the one that's going to get, um, if any, are going to get near it. Um, and then maybe something like a Natuno at a big price might be able to run into third, but all about in secret in the Coolmore. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. In secret uh, to beat Jackano, and, and they are two outstanding horses. 
young horses. And, and I thought this horse economics had trialled up uh, the straight during the week. I saw its work was good. It's had a little bit of a look around up at Flemington. So 15, 1 and 8 for me. Yeah, back on the 10th of the 9th, when Insecret took care of Best of Bordeaux by a couple of lengths and did it comfortably, I went, this is probably the horse that they're going to identify straight out for the Coolmore. So oh, I think it's been the plan the long way out. They're confident. I know that it's going to take a very, very good one to beat it. So pretty safe if you roll within secret. OK, the Eagles going to take off at $10 million up there in Sydney at Rose Hill Gardens. Tell us more about a couple of horses from overseas. Uh, look, there's a horse in here that I really, really, really want to have a crack at, and that's Light Infantry. I've been waiting some time to see this horse. If you go back and have a look at this horse's record when it was overseas, uh, it was genuinely superb. The May Eustace team... Um, have been waiting a long time to let this horse go. I know that it's been doing a lot of beach, uh, beach work up there in Sydney, out near the airport. But you've got to have a look at this. Uh, you've got to have a look at this form line. You go back through at Deauville and the Fresner in a Group One. It ran second there behind in Spiral. Go back further. It ran second behind Tenor Brism. Um, then it was in the Guinea, another Group One race before that, where it caught a little bit of trouble um, when Jamie Spencer rode it there. This is one of the horses I've been waiting the entire spring to see. I'm very, very confident. The form lines are far greater than anything else in this race. I can't believe you're still getting around the $4 mark for this BM. It's staggering the price that we're still getting. Have you sort of dug deeper into the Golden Eagle? What do you think? Oh, I, I like Chain of Lightning, but I don't know a great deal about the international form of this horse. I respect for what you're saying, and I, I look at the form lines around it. It's strong. Jamie Carr's giving up a terrific book of rides. She's a Melbourne Cup ambassador and here she is riding on Derby Day in Sydney and the one plum ride is this chain of lightning. Yeah, look, and it looks pretty well placed and it's funny though, the runner from Peter Moody's camp, we were all talking about I wish I win not that long yeah. ago, weren't we? And, and um, how good and how far is he going to be? He's $11 in this market, so... Um, chain of lightning, I wish I win. I think Moods is going to be in, up and around them, but yeah, I just... There's no way you could talk me out of light infantry here. This is a, this is a genuine star on the rise. This oh, I like the sound of that. Flemington looks to be a couple of good things on the card. Certainly does. We're going to race eight a little bit later in the day. There's a Kiwi horse there called Luck Creek. Oh, I yeah. thought they were going to bring this horse over a little bit earlier and maybe have a tilt um, at a Caulfield Cup. But um, the horses come a little bit later. There are only two names you needed to know in New Zealand um, over the past season, and that was Imperatrice and Luck Creek. This horse is flying. Uh, look, I, I don't think anyone will get anywhere near it. Um, very, very confident on La Creek. And look, there's probably one that's even just in uh, in the race just after it that we saw literally blow the clock up back at Caulfield, and that's race nine, number two, Asaphora for Henry Dwyer. Yeah. I mean, those last sectionals were just lightning. So they're probably going to be the two better ones on the card there, La Creek and Asaphora, to finish the day at Flemington. I love this horse, Turath, who comes to town again. Loved its win at uh, Geelong. Matty Raymond's got it flying. It's handled the soft ground. I thought race five, number seven, that was my best. Yeah, good trainer, Matty yeah. Raymond, isn't yeah. she? And she's doing big things and one to keep an eye on. Uh, look, I think Old Flame and Cinewan in race five are probably two that are going to be in around the mark there, but very, very good horse to Rath. Terrific day, uh, Derby Day. Good luck, mate. Thank you very much, BM. Best of luck to the punters. OK, yes, go on, deluxe yourself. Gamble responsibly. Inside the Barriers, brought to you by Bet Deluxe, serious betting for serious punters.